Hello. Hey, how you guys doing this on this Sunday? It is a beautiful day in May 23rd. Just come out of church and see if I can uh, get some air and get, get out for a while. Anyway, don't want to keep you. Probably this video going to be probably be pretty long because there's some good good, good points in this video what I'm about to make. It's in the, what the commentary said about um, about different topics relating to black men and black women and what type of black women track a certain demographic of black men and what happened and what the type of black men end up happening in the end when they in their late late teens early 20s and just up to their 30s who want to live that lifestyle but i'm gonna let you hear what this man got to say his name is uh um Roll T, uh, what? Uh, let me see. Wake up, everybody. TV. Sure. Just really kind of pissed me off, and it's really talking about why our country, the people of our country, and our, especially our black community, why we are so. I was watching um, a video it was talking about how why Indians, the country of India in America is so strong. And it was just talking about what they do differently with their children, how they treat education, how they treat their family. And man, it just really kind of, it didn't piss me off, but at the same time it kind of did because it's like, this is just basic stuff. How a group of people, a group, of people, not just one family, I'm talking about a group, how they operate as a group, that is one of the things we miss, Americans are so separated that we're not even just Americans anymore, remember when America and then France and UK, we could be said that Americans did this, America this, you don't see that hardly anymore, because we're so divided, and so many interests are taking over what America supposedly is that it's just based off of groups. So this group of Americanized Indians were just killing it. They're like number one in a whole bunch of economic and family steps. And it just pissed me off to see how weak Americans are and also going into the black race. Now, once again, you know, my channel is not just about black people. It's about just the crazy stuff that's going on in the world and then how it applies to you in your life, whether you're black, white, Asian, Indian, whatever you are. Some things will be specifically based off of uh, the black race because I'm a black person, how it impacts us. But this here is specifically about Americans and black folks black Americans because we have become weak I'm talking about downright pitiful sorry can't lift up a biscuit weak and my next part of this is you know when we were when Americans and especially black folks are at their best you know when we're at our best when it's the worst of times that's when we're at our best when Americans were going through World War One and World War Two, they were awesome folks. When black folks were just getting out of slavery and just starting to, you know, build on their own lives for freedom, they were awesome. Awesome during crisis, during the Jim Crow times in the South, black folks were not, say, economically awesome, but they were thriving and they were surviving within each other and they were tighter, a tighter bond of actual community and that's what we're missing as americans and as certain groups of people especially black people we don't have community we don't have a sense of self it's all selfish we don't have a group thought that's and true. movement that we used to have when we were hard pressed on every side to only look to ourselves sometimes i remember in my little hometown we barely had, you know, we couldn't even go to one part of town that where they had grocery stores. So you had to get little trinkets and things from little, little local market stores. Remember Mr. Jubin's spot? All those places closed down, closed down because when we are now able to have the freedom to go to other places, we left those places alone. But when we were in distress, when we're at our dire needs, we worked together with us. Same thing as Americans. When there's stressful times as Americans, we 
one of the reasons I believe that we are so weak as a country and as a, a people, the black community. We got too many damn options. Too many options. I give you a great example. When I was growing up, we had corn flakes. That was it. Corn flakes. There wasn't no tutti frutis. Wasn't no bama whammas. Wasn't <laughs> no rice krispies. Most times, all we had up there was corn flakes. We had bread and we had syrup. Pretty much it. So what happens when a person has too many options? They start being choosy. A uh, bushy. Sometimes I like to call people bushy who, who tell me they got. You know, uh, well, I don't really feel like this, or I don't have a taste for this, or I don't really, that's a bougie-ass sound, because when you didn't have nothing, you would take whatever. Me and one, my grandson, we have some of the uh, little, you know, discussions about this, where when he wants to eat something, it has to be a certain thing. Oh, I only eat uh, chicken nuggets. Oh, I don't eat. Uh, the skin on the chicken, or I don't do this. And it's like, what the hell? What the hell? What has happened? Too many options makes people spoiled. We didn't have too many of any video games when I was growing up. The person who had the video games, one guy, we used to all try to get to his house to play it every now and then. That was it. Now everybody got a video game in the palm of their hand. So it's not something to strive for. It's not nothing special. And people believe they're supposed to have it. That's where the biggest issue I think comes in for me. People are, they believe they're entitled to certain things. They're entitled to have a bunch of variety of food. They're entitled to have the stuff that they desire and no, you're not entitled to nothing. You're entitled to the pursuit of it. That's what the Constitution says. The pursuit of happiness. It doesn't say you're going to be happy. It says you can pursue happiness. But everybody thinks you're supposed to have it. And we're so weak and so coddled and don't have any backbone to where we whine and complain about stuff that other people will kill for. Folks in Africa would kill to have some of the food that these kids throw away. Folks in some of these other poor third world countries would kill to have opportunities that Americans just kind of throw away. Oh, I don't want to work at McDonald's. Oh, I don't need to do this. And the state is actually promoting the weakening of our people. I'll tell you why. I'm going to say why. I'll tell you how. I'll give you some instances of how. Anytime you get something for nothing, that's promoting weakness. You didn't do shit to deserve it. So why do you think you need it or you should get it? Because what happens now, when you get it for free, you expect it for free. That's where the issue comes in. You expect things for free and you expect a bunch of options. You ever seen a person complaining about free shit? Yes. I have. Yes. I can't believe it sometimes. But people will actually complain <laughs> about getting stuff for free. That's true. Oh, this is not really the one I wanted. Oh, no, no. What the hell are we talking about? What the hell have we come to? We are so weak, so coddled as a country, and especially, I'm going to tell you, as a black person, I feel we are so coddled. Me and a buddy of mine had a big discussion about that. How we believe that. We thought we were giving our kids more options, but we made them weaker. We made them a weaker people because of all those options. So, we're weak. Americans weak. America is weak. And the black race is weak, for sure. It's just, that's hard for me. So, I just wanted to throw it out to y'all today. What do you think about it? Well, it's, it's interesting I'll take on that, you know. There's some black people that feel like that. But anyway, um, he ain't the only one that feels this way. This guy, he, he makes some good examples. It's never been easier to help preserve uh, the simple joys Jay, of our world with Clean Jay, Choice Energy. Switching to uh, clean electricity is one of the Jay simplest Hull. and biggest ways you can help the environment.
curfews, closures, and chaos in South Beach as spring break visitors overwhelm the city. Hey, what's good, guys? So ever since I made this first video on black people, I've been trying to go deeper to see what people are saying and what's going on in the black community. And that led me to this video right here. Check it out. The black community is, is doomed. And why I don't no longer identify as a black man, the women are attracted to killers and drug dealers. Asian Dow made a tweet that said, if you don't, if you're, I'm attracted to killers. If you don't have any bodies, I don't want you. Dysfunctional. How can you save a community that's in love with its dysfunction? It's black men that would be square if girls actually liked and respected a nine to five honorable man. But they're out here selling drugs. They're out here trying to be a rapper and a gangster because that's what girls like. And girls will tell you they don't want an honor, but they want a scammer or a drug dealer. They love criminals. How can you save a community that loves the criminals and shames the good dude? You can't. If you're a good brother with a head on your shoulders, you have to escape. So listen, this is a tweet he's talking about by Asian, the brat. She said, please have at least three bodies before you talk to me. Boy, I like killers. I am embarrassed. I am disappointed. And then there's comments defending this tweet. Y'all taking this too literal. She's just saying she likes to be protected. Well, she didn't say that. She said she liked killers. Straight up. And you don't have to be with a killer to be protected. And the thing he said about men acting like squares if women wanted squares. I agree with that. Because women determine the dating market. Us men, we have to learn about women and chase them. We have to know what they want and be that. So if they want squares, we'll act more like squares. If they want gangsters, we're gonna act more like gangsters. If all a woman right now said, I require at least 10 dates before I even kiss you, we would have no choice but to take them on 10 dates. They determine the market. But let's continue, man. This is a video I found on YouTube about a guy interviewing girls and asking them if they would prefer a drug dealer Watch or this. a doctor. A doctor that makes 600000 a year, or a drug dealer make $3 million a day. Drug dealer. Drug dealer? Period. Drug dealer. Drug dealer. Drug dealer. Drug dealer. Drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Only fun, drug dealer. Where the stand shake? Give me the drug dealer. I already like killer. Period. Alright, alright, alright. Now you gotta calculate this. I need a drug dealer. You heard her. <laughs> drug dealer. You know the vibe? This is what happens when you have a culture that chases instant gratification instead of long-term stability. It's like they don't even care what comes with dating a drug dealer. If you're a drug dealer, there's two outcomes for you. You either get killed or go to jail. And with fast money comes slow problems. But these girls right here are not thinking about the long-term repercussions. They're thinking about the lavish lifestyle right exactly. now. And then they're going to have babies with these drug dealers. And he's going to end up killed or being jailed. And they're going to end up being single mothers. So they're pretty much saying... I want to be a single mama. That's, that's what they pretty much say. And the black community has the most single moms. And it's just going to increase with bullshit like this. Why do average people think dating average people is settling for less? Nobody want a nigga that works 9 to 5. Like, whoa, whoa, like whoa, it's not whoa, giving whoa, that. Whoa, like, whoa. I don't let's bring, let's bring that back. King? What you mean you don't, don't want, a, you don't want niggas that date? You understand they're that, that there's 9 to 5 like lawyers and the, you know oh, what I mean? But, what kind of niggas you want? Like, you don't want a 9 to 5. You want a 9 to 5. Right. I want a nigga that you're scared of. And a nigga that will work Drug dealer. too, but not no 9 to 5. I'm not giving that. Drug what dealer. kind of work? Drug dealer? Like, yeah. No, 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 no. No, there's no drug dealer. A nigga that's scared, like, he's outside to get a bread and come back with a leash. So once that dude get locked up, the, exactly. what, 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 what? Is it on to you the gonna next say, one? You gonna stay with him? Um, I'm you, gonna... You hold him down? I'm, no, I'm gonna take his money and then. Uh, what money? The feds is taking that money when he go to jail. Duh. He's a girl. So what are you gonna do though? I'm gonna continue myself. Myself. My mother's scam. But you just say you help me, so you going to jail too. <sighs> <laughs> She's a dumbass. Yeah. She would rather. Yeah. Take on a life of crime. <laughs> See what some of these young women are. Than be in a stable relationship, man. It's so ridiculous that it's just funny. Come on, you'd rather date a scammer I got one more video with the risk of going one. to jail than actually have a stable relationship with the average guy and build a family. Sad, man. 
sad. And that leads me on to this next clip of a girl rejecting a brother over here that works for the military as a I remember, I remember yeah. I did this one. What up? You're meeting? Uh, yeah, I, I was actually reading. Um, I, I ship out in a few days, so I'll just read the artist strategy. Okay. Uh, the military? Uh, yeah, so actually I'm a nuclear physicist for the Navy, so I, I do that in a, few, in a few days. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your stuff. Uh, I like martial arts a lot. I did uh, a bit of pharmacy uh, back when I was a little bit younger, about two, three years ago. I got certified in pharmacy around when I was 17. Um, I didn't really do anything with it. I went to university for a while. I was getting like a business degree. So I have a bachelor's in business. And then I did uh, pharmacy for a little while, for about three years, and then got bored. So I was like, eh, let's go see what the military has to offer. Didn't do anything. Now I ship out in a few days. Oh, okay, nice. Well, best of luck as you ship out pineapples. Yeah. Why? Because he literally didn't tell me any qualities about himself. He's just like, I made a 96 on this. I did this. And I feel like I did that at first, too. But however, I need a man with some personality. You felt that quick? You know you didn't have personality? You can't make this up. <laughs> you can't make this up. Yeah. 
after the spring break shit. I'm not trying to deal with all that, man. Black people, we got to do better, man. We got to do better. We can't blame everything on the police. We can't blame everything on discrimination, on white supremacy. I think that shit does exist in some circumstances, but most of the time, it's just us acting a fool and just blaming people and not holding ourselves accountable. We need to start looking at ourselves and stop being victims. We need to change the course of the black community, man, because this shit's wild. You know, I, have, I agree. That last point, I got to agree with that. But you think that's something. But it gets really severe because you got you got this one guy. You know, they talk about drug dealers and stuff like that, making that money. This a guy used to be in the game. He gonna keep the street version of what's going. On. If you're a young man that knows somebody, knows somebody in the game, they need to listen to this video. Or, or you, if you, if you're a mother. Sister of a brother that's in, doing this kind of life, you need to listen to this video because this is going to happen. They think it's cute. These young dudes think it's cute. Watch. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brandon Novini and for Adam Cooperstein. And prosecutors say those gang members shot at rivals in broad daylight and then bragged about it on social media. At the center of it all, two well-known rappers from Brooklyn. Rappers Chef G and Sleepy Hollow are accused of helping carry out violence against rival gang members in Flatbush and Crown Heights. Police say they are members of the Crips. The two rappers were among 32 alleged gang members charged today in a 140-count indictment. The DA saying the gang is linked to 12 shootings and one murder, which was caught on camera. You see, see one of them young dudes, them young women? Watch, watch what's happened with this one. You, you don't get it from the real perspective now. From hood educated. People like this get robbed, get shot to death.
that good money he had, yeah, he used some of that to have another brother killed. You know, he, hey man, look here, y'all go, go take care of that. So now, after he paid them to go take care of that, they went and took care of that. I actually have been privileged to get my hands on the video of the drive-by shooting that caused this whole investigation. Now, y'all know how I do on Hood Educated. Like, those type of videos I don't show on my channel. Why? Because, you know, YouTube will try to demonetize my channel. YouTube will probably, like, put my channel in a bad algorithm. And, you know, it, it won't be fruitful for me to, uh, to show that video on my channel. However, I will have pinned in the comment section a link to my Patreon channel where you can go over there and you can see the video yourself if you are into that type of stuff. If you're not into that type of stuff, all is well. But if you are and you like that type of stuff, hey, it's over there. However, I will give you a bridge version of the video. Now, in this video, what you're going to see is you're going to see a white car. It's like in the alleyway or something or a driveway, some type of, you know, them, them New York streets is kind of crazy. But it's it's sitting there and it has the hazard lights on as if, you know, it's waiting for somebody. The sunroof is back. Obviously, uh, the two side, the driver side window and the, the back seat dri uh, driver Ooh. side part, is, those windows are down. The next thing you know, you just see hands come out the window guns blazing and you see a man who comes out of the uh the sunroof find his weapon now in this shooting as they pull off they shot six people six one of them died and the one that died was sniper the one that he was online having that social media beef with now after this, his sister texted him, Chef G, his sister texted him and said, hey, one of they top guys must have just got killed. He don't say nothing to his sister, right? But he go to the people that he paid. Hey, man, he trying to confirm the killing. He trying to confirm the hit. So the hit man sends him a picture of sniper in a newspaper article or, or the you know the news uh, casting on what happened. Two days after that, it's party time. They celebrate. They happy. They don't get one of their ops. They go to the you know the best restaurants out there in New York. They eating good. They smoking good. They drinking good. They celebrating the death of another man that looked just like him. All because they was on social media talking crazy to one another. Listen, y'all, I'm talking about um, these young brothers nowadays are so emotional that you, they can't even have a disagreement without wanting to kill each other. That's why I say, man, look, and, and this might even this might even be uh, what they say. I might even be contradicting myself when I say this, but I'm almost in the agreement with uh, leadership in the hood as far as these gangs and stuff like that. And, and let me explain to y'all why. A lot of the stuff that these gangs is doing nowadays, leaders wouldn't go for. Leaders would, no, uh, uh you ain't finna do that. You know, you got gang members running around slapping people mama, slapping people kids, you know, messing with the innocent. Shooting when they see the innocent outside. Shooting at people when they see them with their children, their mama and stuff like that. Like, back in the day, like, gang leaders was, was Okay, it was a war, it was some bad stuff going on, but at the same time, they had some type of integrity. You see what I'm saying? Like, they, they had some type of integrity with the street life. Nah, uh, in the daytime, nah, we ain't, we ain't doing too much out here in the daytime. At 
time, we got the night. That's us. Uh huh. No, no, man. Y'all did what? Y'all slept that man, mama? Come on, y'all a violation. We don't do that. I can remember as a shorty, you know, like skipping school and stuff like that. And when the elites in the hood would see us like skipping school, like they'd get on us. Now, we would skip school, don't get me wrong. It's just that once we get caught by the elites, we got a violation coming. Because we skipping school. You see what I'm saying? So I, I know some of y'all might be like, uh, educated, they criminals and all that. And I understand that part right there. But like I said before, the stuff that these guys are doing right now because they had an argument on the internet and that, that led to some killing and the shooting of five other people. Elites and, and board members, governors, uh, uh, OG big homies and stuff like that. If they got any type of structure and control of the youngins, They'll be like, nah, bro, y'all ain't finna go do that. Y'all finna kick off a whole war because y'all on the internet talking crazy to each other. No, y'all ain't, man. Y'all better not go over there and do that. Y'all gonna start a whole war. We don't need no war. See, now these kids right here, they don't care about war. They, they don't care. Back then, at least, the leaders of me, they understood war costs money. Not only that, war brings heat on the neighborhood. Can't make no money when you want. So they had some type of integrity. So y'all don't beat me down too much about that. But this is hood educated, not lane related. I just got to give it to y'all from both sides, right? So now, getting back to Chef G. Chef G was already incarcerated when he got indicted. Ooh, yeah, that right there hurt the body. You already locked up and you two months to on your way to come home. This man is in jail planning. Okay, when I get out this time, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to take care of my kids. You know what I mean? I done got my mind right. I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to. Two months. And then here they come with that old indictment. Yeah, we charging you with murder. Attempted murder. Uh, robbery, gun possession. Drugs, all type of stuff. Right? That's a killer. You finna come home and, and they come and hit you with something like the murder? Wait a minute. And not only that, they saying that you the head one, that you paying people to murder? And then when you read those charge papers, you look and see that they got your text messages? Yeah. They got Chef G text messages. For that first hit on Sniper, and then he tried to pay somebody 5000 to do another hit. 5000 5000 dog for a life. And these boys is, is, is taking that ticket for $5,000 to go kill somebody, to ruin somebody's whole life, to ruin it. That's how you know life cheap. Life cheap. And the people that are accepting five thousand dollars to go kill somebody, they don't even care about their life. That's how cheap their life is. Man, this is a bad situation we got going on. This is a horrible situation that we got going on. So I can just imagine, right? I can imagine right now all the gang bankers and the gangsters that's in the streets and everything right now that watch hood educated and that you know uh, uh that's watching this whole ordeal go down they looking at that paperwork and saying they got his text messages what about my text messages when we did that demonstration last summer i did text what you call and told him what we had did and i did send him the, you know, the newspaper article and all. What about mine? Yeah. Yeah, you got to worry about that. Yes, you have to worry about that. Like I said before, young brothers, technology done changed. Technology gonna catch you all the time. Them cameras, that satellite up there, look, they they gonna get 
every time you think you're doing something slick, that phone gonna tell on you. Mm -hmm. This technology gonna tell on you. Yes. Why? Because you are so dependent on the technology. The best thing you can do is just get out the way in hope. In hope that, hey man, I hope they don't come and indict me. I hope they don't come and indict us. But nine times out of ten, that's what you gotta understand. If your ops get indicted, guess who next? Yeah, guess who next? You. Your gang. Your clique. Why? Because whatever they did or whatever they was engaged in, the guys that already been indicted, the A-Tray, uh, the A-Tray Crips, they ops, they had to be in tour with them. So, if the police know what the A-Tray Crips was doing, you better know, they know what y'all was doing too. And look, it's not just the text messages, don't get it twisted. Because the information that they got, no, somebody else was in there like this here. Yep, Chef G did that, and he was the one that, you know, he was going to try to pay us 5000 and he was the one that did this. And after the killing, you know, we went to celebrate, and we did. Yeah, it's somebody doing a lot of that. Yeah, it's somebody doing a lot of that. So, listen, young gangsters, listen. I don't care what you do and what you think you're doing. And who you think the realest around you is somebody. Right now, look around at your circle of friends right now. You know, gang, gang, you know, we gonna kill everybody. Look around right now. One of them, if not two, three of them, when they get deep and they get to talking about life in the penitentiary and all that, one of them is gonna be like, uh, excuse me. I, I need to tell y'all something. I want to tell y'all the truth. Yeah. It wasn't me. Mm -hmm. It was Bulldog. He the <laughs> one that started everything. Yeah. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So, why you thinking that? No, gang, gang. As a matter of fact, look, I want you to listen to Chef G. Listen to him. This is after he got out of the joint from doing his first bid. Listen to what he said his gang did while he was locked up and how it was while he was locked up. Check it out. It's fascinating. Same ones that you running around with risking your life. 
fight for and trying to kill people for is not going to be there for you when you get incarcerated. Mm-hmm. When you get life in the penitentiary, you know what that, you know what's going to happen to you? You dead. You dead. You died. When yeah. you get life in the penitentiary, yeah. you die to the world. You mm-hmm. in prison. Yeah. Only thing you're going to get, hey man, free one nigga, man. That's it. T-shirt. Free him. Uh, social media posts. Free him. That's it. Uh, ain't gonna be no pictures. Ain't gonna be no going to take care of your child. Ain't gonna be no uh, helping your, your child's mother or your mama with rent or anything like that. Uh, ain't gonna be no picking up the phone. You heard it from the horse's mouth. Mm-hmm. He know how it go. He know how it go. But yet and still, he got out here and forgot about all that. We forget so easily. He forgot about all that and went right back into that same lifestyle. Now look at him. Cold-blooded demonstration. Listen, what's happening to Chef G don't have to happen to you. If you out here living right now and I'm talking about and you can change things and stuff like that, you can get out the way. And hope, though, depending on what you done did, and hope that you ain't under indictment right now. This is hood educated, not lame related. Peace on. And I'm going to say this right here to add on what he was saying. So, you know how every now and then, you know, as a man, you want to, you, if you're a straight man, you want to be with your girl. You ain't going to be with your girl hooking up when you going to be booed up with some dude in prison. That's that's another thing you need to think about in your manhood is it, you know if you hopefully you got you strong spiritually because there are men gonna look at other men that who normally wouldn't go in that lifestyle would, would take on that lifestyle and there are men being punked out in there right and stuff like that this this story is about that so is it work one of you gonna have to be a woman in there. Clearly, somebody's woman. So I don't see what it what it was the cause of that. You talk all bad and big now, but if you get a t- couple, two, three, four hundred pound muscle build, know how to knock you out, dudes, you in trouble. So is it worth it? And then you get smart mouth with 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 the correction officers, like you get with the police. It's all it's all that that's the wrong time be in front of some correction officer. And talking a bunch of mess when you behind the walls, they can make it very hard for you. So hey, if that's the lifestyle you want to get, and you women out out there, yeah, that that find it find, find so ooh, like, like it's Doug style. Well, he, he he's he's been turned. Some of them gonna be turning to women. They go and acting hard, and they come out doing some things. And you gotta share whatever this sexual exchange the diseases so i hope that's what you want when you want a real nigga you know that's you know i hope you that's what you want to them young women like that and to other women yeah because that's what's coming out if they he come up out of prison some of them do or something they've been institutionalized if they if they're strong enough but anyway i'm going to show you a, another case before we go on with another commentary makes this lawyer was involved with a gangbanger black chick from what I understood her boyfriend she knew to do and this is from the blackout channel check out what he says check out this story you ain't gonna believe this mess a lawyer a female lawyer he gets involved with a drug dealer and you wonder why workers. this no why brothers are leaving the United States. They're small. Just go to eBay Motors. I did a video. I did a live, right? Talking about how Pookies take out these black women, right? Pookies are Ray Rays and then they blame it on black men. Meanwhile, black women be taking out black men at an alarming rate. They take out black men. They take out pookies too, but they take out black men at an alarming rate. The only black males that take out Keisha is these pookies and Ray Rays. They get involved in these situations. They being, they, you know, they get with these gangbangers, and then when they get 
now by gang bangers, they blame it on productive black men. Exactly. And that's the difference. And the reason why I'm, I'm playing this video is to show y'all that the it doesn't matter they, what they kind blame of the lame, y'all. It could be a Keisha wearing a referee They blame shirt. the lames. The black men are lame. Uh, at Foot Locker, <laughs> or it could be a Keisha studying law. It could be a Keisha who's a, a, a surgeon. They have a high mind. They all think alike. They they still want to be connected to these pookies and ray rays, gang bangers, drug dealers. They still want to be with them because they right. don't think that being with productive black men is exciting enough. Right. They love the drama. Yes. And I'm going to play this video. Yes. Yes. Just to show you how much drama they, they love, you know. And part of the video, we have to enter the so we so we can so I can explain to y'all so I can show y'all exactly how they get down. This is a video. Uh, this is a, a recording of Wack 100 and a rapper, a failed West Coast rapper named Forty Glock. And I want y'all to listen to the Keishas who just get involved in this that don't have to be involved. Let's go. Which I do agree with. 
trying but you think that I'm, I'm gonna give try to go back to it but um but this guy made a good point in this video watch what he says hey peace what's up man I'm, um i just had a quick uh idea just watch a uh, death row music video and it made me uh, realize that the only thing um black people or the only culture black people maintain and respect and defend and uphold and uplift and dignify is um, ghetto hood culture. I mean, I made a similar video to this before, but it's just so um, pertinent. And what I mean by that is like, if you're, it doesn't matter what race you are, if you're ghetto or trashy or you look like a, a criminal or a street thug or, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm not gonna say there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't have any problem with these people in general. I just don't believe that they should be um, the face of black culture. I don't think that they should be who's representing black people because um, gangsters and thugs are always the uh, image that America puts out of black people and that creates an imbalance because the only uh, alternative to those images is um, homosexuality and uh, pacifism and uh, emasculated men and um, sellouts and coons. So, like, we don't have any. We, uh, America has totally eliminated the um, traditional black man and the, the traditional black woman, for that matter. I mean, um, there's nothing cool about ghetto black women, in my opinion. I, I like, I have no interest or um, really respect for uh, these people because um, they don't have any respect for themselves. The way they talk, the way they behave, the way they dress. It's like, why am I, why are you forcing me to have respect for ghetto culture when it's not part of my culture and I don't care about it? Like, people who identify being ghetto with being black, and that's not fair to people who are black and who aren't ghetto. And so, um, yeah. that pretty much sums up pretty much everything that I want to say. Um, I wish I took better care of myself before I made this video. I mean, I'm kind of raggedy. But, um, the point, um, is well taken. And uh, hopefully uh, black people will stick together. You don't have to uh, be interracial. You don't have to worship white people. And you don't have to be ghetto. And you don't have to be trash. And you don't have to be from the hood. You can just be a regular black person. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully find another regular black person that's not uh, a stereotype. And that can, uh, that uh, worships the most high. And doesn't believe in white supremacy. Peace. And I could, I couldn't say much more than that. But it, it it was really messed up, man. That there's there's some people, and that's why I'm gonna just kill it right here. But you can go to his channel. Um, yeah, that's why a lot of black men was complaining about that. That's why certain ones that were able-bodied to go to these different countries because. Young and even young men, young men in their twenties to the forties and fifties, and pants and beyond, because this is what the culture had seen, seen, and so that some of these women here are attracted when it comes to black women. They're attracted to dudes like that, and they think that well, and this is a, the one thing that they'll say is like, well, the reason why I attract because he has a lot, a lot of alpha energy with all the cussing and. and you know, like you're going to jump on somebody, you're going to shoot somebody, and they like that energy. It's, it's the truth. And so it's like, so he, a man can't be rational, don't know how to rationalize his anger. So you want somebody to just pop off and cause a whole bunch of havoc and, and rhetoric. Get a chance to get thrown in jail. Get a chance to get, get had to spend money to get bonded out. Get a chance and have something on your record. Now you can't can't do certain things or get certain things, but because your anger allowed that. And the last thing they want to do is, is to see that you're an angry, irrational black person. And that's the first thing they're gonna do. And you know it, it, it works in this society, it works against you. But you got some black people that that don't see life like that. And it's the truth. So the reason why 
you know, some of these black men are going to other women and going to other countries. And maybe some even go, go if they want a black woman, they probably go actually go to some remote place in Africa or somewhere where some women don't have that mindset like our American women do. And it's, we're one of the Western countries, our American women, black women do that. They got this, oh, I can't figure, I can't, I don't feel you, you're not man, so I'm not going to cater my femininity to you because it's got to cost you that something. So, and, and then they get angry and make social media, why all these men going? And, and, there, and there's some busted up men, like they say, they call passport pookies that go and do some stupid stuff, but it's not, that's not every black man. You, you, you were pushed away the good black man because you physically wasn't tracking, tracking to him for one thing. They looked at busted up, they were lame. And so, why, what I don't understand, you wouldn't attract the, 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 the type of man in the first place. You attracted to the dude is, is drama. You the track to do is mostly unstable. He don't know how to really conduct himself. He he don't know how and, and don't know how to channel his anger in a way that'll get the point across. You it's gotta go to another different level. And there's some women that like to see men go to that different level. Even if it means someone calling the police and you get and put the mark some hands hands on somebody and you end up going to jail. And it's crazy. You're not trying to go to jail and lose your job and lose and lose your house and lose everything messing around with somebody that wants to see you. I have witnessed it a couple times in my life. And, and, and a couple good black men I know that didn't have kids of their own, they, they went behind other men who they had kids with and, and come to find out, you know, one's still married. But there, there are black men I know that have no kids of their own. Got with women with kids to take up the responsibility of black men that they, they, they didn't work things out. And it, went, and it seemed like that those secondary men and third dairy black men, they didn't even appreciate them. Because one of my, one of my good friends, like I mentioned a couple of videos before, he went, his wife just wanted chaos. And so she lied on the neighbor Got him, got him thrown in prison. Then she made a, a, a fabrication lie that he put his hands on one of her children, and he ended up doing about damn it, a decade in jail. And this this was a and this was a sister, a black woman, knowing that this is going to do that. I hate to say it, it was. And then he, then my same friend before he met her, there was another woman that wanted to see something jump off. Me, and my one of my best friends, get into it. Because she lied and said that I made the moves on him because he went around the block to go get something. And we were standing out there. I'm about five feet away from her. I, you know, never had that ne meant anything. And he knows me pretty well. He you know I wouldn't do some stuff like that. But you got some women are th that are vindictive out here. See, you don't hear the other side how some women can be very vindictive. And how they, they will set you up and get you murdered and killed over a lie. Or beat up over something that you, you get jumped on something you didn't even do and, and especially if, if that man's unstable he's un, unemotional he ready to react and ready to punch out and fight and shoot somebody there's some black women who they find that they're fascinating and, and th they don't have the sense they don't have the com common sense enough no and it's not just there's other women that do that too but it's like wow there's some dangerous, in, in, in the West, we have some dangerous women like that, man. No joke. How many men are probably out of the ones that's in jail and prison? What is the percentage of the, behind some woman? Lying. I'll bet you it is. Saying some false allegations. And, you know, and she made herself the victim, come to find out the evidence and proof that he didn't do it. Then later on, he... he He's in prison, take five or ten years off, his, or twenty years off his life, and they think it's cute. Why? Why they go on to another dude, the dude that they really want? So you gotta be careful as a good black man, good man, period, because these brothers, they something else. You hear what them young women they say? For you young brothers, man, you, in your twenties, and you be careful, man. 
Yeah, those who subscribe to me, those who come across this video, you be careful of those kind of women. You hear what that interviewer said? She wanted, she wanted big yeah. But yeah, you see what happened to the rapper, and that's what ended up happening to some of them. Yeah, they, they, they flashed that money. But, you know, because they made a deal with the devil, and the devil come to pay up with your freedom or, or the grave. So, so, so then what you do? If that's the way you, and, and then you have kids with these guys, you want to um, raise your sons up that way so they can take the same pattern of death? And I don't know what's wrong. And some women find that, and this in, in the community find that fascinating. They do. That was like that one situation with the basketball player. His one time, his mother got into it with somebody at the store, right? And it was over a customer service. Stand a hell of a relationship, knowing that Jay Morant, he, and and it was allegedly. That he brought down a whole group of people, clowned out in front of the store, and you know they said the manager had to go in there because got all these. You got an entourage about ready to jump on you because he, so his mama called him, called him down there. What I'm saying, so some mothers encourage this behavior. I mean, only time is somebody. I mean, somebody, somebody, you know, kind of physically attack and jump on your mother or sister or whatever. I can understand that. But for you to instigate the stuff. So you got people that instigate just because they can't handle their anger and their emotions. This is what we got problem as a, a people in the community. And that's why, you know, and, and these dumb asses don't understand stand it, that when you go behind prison walls, guess what? If you end up doing life, if you, it depends on what state you're in, they're going to get prison labor out of you, free labor out of you, while you're in there. If you want to breathe some fresh air and pay you 20 cents to make a product for a company. So is so you become a slave. So a lot of these young black men are going into the penal system being slaves and don't even know it. While you rapping and get, trying to make that money, they set you up. To be plantation Negroes. In other words, you, uh, remember it, slavery went away. Slavery didn't go away. The government institutionalized it. And they some of them end up going to prisons or jails. So, so I hope it and then being a stereotype. So they say, yeah, you're going to be my NGGR. But y'all call it NGGA, but you're going to be the GR. And that's what they're telling you. Because you're celebrating it, then you, you know. Because you, if you want the rock, a ratchet culture, that's what it is, and and you get the ratchet results, and then somebody end up getting hurt or killed because of your ratchet behavior, and then you rob your your, your full life of raising your son if you have kids, a son and daughter. Because you want to be a, a hood dude in the street. It's going to cost you your freedom. And then you got silly women that want to chase behind it and encourage it. And, and, it's a, and then it, that's what causes division among black people. That's, cause the, that's going to cause a division. That's why the, there's two different areas. You need to get away from them. Or, or go to another race of people. So that's what that's what you plan after is a pro-black. That's the reason why. Because when you see that kind of behave kind of behavior, and and they say everybody see it, but no, but now they see it as us collective. See some of these folks don't understand this stuff. And in the music, Satan rules that. So when he comes to collect your soul, because you want to be rebellion and flash that money, flash that jewelry, and doing all these so signs, there's a debt to pay. And soon enough, that's why you see a lot of these young men lost their lives. A lot of them were supposed to leave this earth that early. But because they're rebellion and they want to be hood, and somebody support that hood, that, that, 
that 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 the lifestyle is a form of expression so on art well flashing money and flashing guns should be a form of art because it seems like it's sending out a bad vibe to some people like hey oh you, you challenging me oh I'm, I'm gonna take you and it's like they're like they, 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 like that they must be saying I'm gonna take this person out because he, he flashed his gun on me next thing you know he gets in the car one day goes to a city and town and you see what happens and it's sad because they left with a family who's gonna raise the, the little ones because they want to be hood dudes hood nicks like the, that girl wanted and somebody think and that's and like he said it's a ratchet culture that's part of the ratchetness most black people don't want to be associated with ratchetness i know i don't but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and get off this video but yeah you, and you see what you said those who you know the people in the game that's what they're gonna do they're gonna turn you into a woman too because you're gonna be booed up with another man in there that's 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 real because if they tell you, you gotta go to prison for the rest of your life you don't you don't get the comfort of hugging a, a soft milk natural woman you don't get to hug your mother your sister you don't get the touch of, of your girlfriend you, you booed up with another man working out that or a man is trying to be a woman in there. It's if they turn into a woman. It's, so my question is, is it worth it? And that's real. So it's something to think about. Hopefully some people they take his advice. And really and ladies the only way is you young ladies if anybody or ladies period. Think about what you're asking when you ask what this the type of black man. And you see the results when they go into the prison or they go into the grave. And that's what you want. And, and, and keep the not think about the analogy behind it. And you're going to have to explain to your kid, where's daddy at? Good luck with that.